it's not about all your pleasure. Bubbling over with! <laughs> Now, here for your viewing pleasure, a man who needs no introduction, he needs medication, Bob Carroll. Hey, gang, how are you? How's everybody doing? Welcome to the show. Hello, Terry Morgan. How are you? How's everybody? And I see uh, Bill and Rich and Joe and everybody. And let me just uh, put Terry's name down because I never know when Terry's going to show up. <laughs> he comes in the show. But, oh, you're hey, having leftover dinner with Bob. Well, what, what better thing can you do than that? Exactly. Welcome to the show, everybody. And Virginia, nice to see you. Virginia Carrico, ladies and gentlemen. Say hi to her. I'm going to put her down. I hope she stays for the show. It's show 99. It's also our anniversary for the sixth year that we've been here in uh, beautiful downtown Burbank. We moved here uh, on this day, and we uh, didn't move into our apartment where we are now till uh, July. But we uh, have been here six years as of today. The rent still hasn't gone up. Don't tell anybody. All right, good. Welcome to the show. If you're ready, I am ready. It's Great Day America tomorrow, show 100. I can't wait. Tomorrow's going to be a little different, so I'll tell you about that later on. But if you're ready, so am I. Let's get on with the big show here today. If I had a chicken, uh, for every time I said that. <laughs> if I had a chicken, for every time I said, let's get on with it. I'd have chickens, exactly. Welcome, Tom Gentile. Oops, no, it's upside down. Your computer's upside down, Tom. It's 99, not 66. All right. Welcome to the show. Here's the first question. Hands on your buzzards. Remember, the points don't matter. They're about as useless as watching this trivia show. <laughs> show 100 tomorrow. I can't believe it. All right. Who invented the bifocal lenses... In 1780, who invented the bifocal lenses in 1780? Is Dan here? Dan is here. All right, Dan and Patty are here, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Oh, my gosh. Did I put Dan down? Yes. I put Virginia's name down. I put her on the list, too. All right, so who, uh, we watched this, and it's kind of strange. And Nick is here. Nick is going on vacation. Or I forgot where he said he was going, but... Hope he has a good one. Darcy's here. Darcy, ladies and gentlemen, is my sister. She doesn't like to admit it. <laughs> and uh, let's see who else gets this. Oh, Rich Obert. That's nice. Nice to see you, Rich. Uh, looking forward to the show tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, it's it's going to be fantastic. I can't. I really can't wait because the, the lineup is unbelievable. Uh, we got Billy Benton and his Blind Bears, <laughs> the mother of the unknown soldier. See uh, the cesspool cleaning lady, and <laughs> what do we got? Oh, Tom said something, and Terry said something. I gotta put names down here. And Ed, Ed Gardner, ladies and gentlemen, boy, he was neck and neck yesterday, but Karen squeaked by and won. I'm telling you, Ed knows his stuff, and Dan's got a point. And uh, oh, vacation in three weeks, Montana for son's vacation. Good. Okay, go fly a kite, Gary Levinson says. All right. I gotta do code in this show. Yep, there you go. Six years ago was our party. That's yes, our big, our big party there at the. Uh, um, yes. 
Rich's Magic Shop. Yes, Rich has got a magic shop in Ludlow. Yes, right. A big party, and I got the nice cake from you guys. I appreciate it. It's sort of like, you know, seeing my friends uh, long distance now. So it's, I'm glad everybody's here. Virginia, do you have an answer or are you just hanging out? <laughs> if you said Ben Franklin, go fly a kite, you old guy. That's right. And White says you need more tail. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, never mind. The phone was ringing. I got to shut that off. I don't know what that's all about. Okay, shut that off. I can't have that phone call. <laughs> RP Magic. Yes. I knew it was RP Magic, but I couldn't think of Rich's last name, but I knew <laughs> RP Magic. That's right. For the best in magic in Massachusetts. And so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ben Franklin. And that was the right answer. All right. Here's the next question. Who directed Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Who directed? Oh, yeah, we did the big show at Europa in Ludlow. That was a great show. Great experience. Had a great time with everybody there. I miss it. It was, it was gas money to get across country. <laughs> I guess Virginia left. All right. There is no Santa Claus, Virginia. There you go. All right, what do we got? Who directed Close Encounters of the third kind. All right, somebody's got this. Oh, okay. There we go. And Nick, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, oh, Trent, ladies and gentlemen, just walked in. He's been a busy man. Uh, did I put him down again? No, I did. I'll put him down now. Trent has been a busy guy doing work. He's actually working, and that's good. I'm glad to see that he's working. It's always good to have somebody working in this country. Uh, whether you're home working or uh, you know on the road, you know try to wear the mask. Mask it up, as I say. And Bill, Bill's got a point. I'm going to give him two points because he's number one today. All right. And Joe, Joe, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Tom, well, good. <laughs> and Jerry, and uh, who did one and two? Thank you, Dan. I don't know what that meant. <laughs> you. <laughs> Anyway, Steven Spielberg, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Steven Spielberg. It's 207 Our Show Today is brought to you like it is every day by magictricks.com. All right, magictricks.com, best magic tricks in the entire universe, unless you go to RP Magic and then, of course. I got to give everybody a plug, you know. <laughs> you know, if, you're, if you live in that area, go to a real magic shop. It's always good to go to a magic shop. Pete's Real Magic Shop, magictricks.com. $5 magic gift code to see Pete and Jackie, and I thank them very much for their months of support here at this little Ricky Dink show. And by, hey, here's a book. <laughs> How to Smoke Weed Out of Anything. And uh, <laughs> we're not allowed to smoke in our apartment, so we have to drive around, do it in our car. And that's our products for the day. All right, good. Maybe. <laughs> All right, good, let's do this. Nothing like a good brick and mortar shop. It's always good to go in and help yourself to stuff behind the counter. <laughs> ah, I remember going to Boston all the time and going to a magic shop over there. Mm. Oh, well. <laughs> We're back on live again? All right, good. Uh, 1979, Moonraker, James Bond film starring Roger Moore, premieres in London. What number James Bond film does this make that were released at this time? Does that make sense? What number James Bond film is this? That's all I have to ask. You know, that's the question. All right, you guys figure it out from there. What number James Bond film is this? How many James Bond films did they make when they got to this number? It sounded better on paper when I wrote it down. <laughs> what number James Bond film was this? All right. I got the answer right in front of me. Stand by. We got a magic question coming up. Oh, a magic question? How does that do in history? All right. Uh, Nick says about 10. <laughs> All right. Well, it's about something. Yeah. Four, four more or less, Trent says. Gary Levinson says 15. All right. You know the answers. Are you reading them just like I am? All right, hold on. 
If you get close by one or two, I'll give you the point. But not over five, you know, you know oh, oh, 007. <laughs> Can't wait to see the next, next James Jamie Bond film. What's her name going to be? Jamie? Jimmy? I don't know. Jane? Jane Bond? Jane Bond would be good. Yeah. All right. What do we got? Everybody's answer? Did Darcy leave already? <laughs> Darcy was in there for a minute. Oh, well, what do you got? Kathy's not here? Oh, Kathy missed her intro. All right, well. All right, what do we got? It's uh, 11. 11. All right. A couple people got it close. I gave it to them. What are you going to do? There you go. It's 11. The 11th film, uh, Moonraker, you know, where he goes in outer space and all that stuff. And they're at the end, of course, they're in a space capsule fooling around. 1946, Richard Potash. American magician and actor was born on this day. Uh, passed away in 2018. He appeared in a lot of many, uh, many, many movies, including Tomorrow Never Dies, called the best sleight of heart, hand artist in the world. Who is this guy? Uh, who is this famous magician? Twelve, Darcy. All right. Well, I'll, I'll give it that to you because you were so close. All right. All right. There's a couple in uh, Pennsylvania, magic shops still around, I guess. But there you go, Mingus Magic Shop in Reading is really nice. Yes, thank you for coming in today, everybody. Tomorrow's show, it's going to be fantastic. I got, I got several prizes, uh, several prizes for you and everything. So it's going to be four prizes, and it's just not going to be trivia. Because trivia is trivial, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, Trent, ooh, ooh. I mean, people really want care about this $5 gift card. <laughs> they do because you're ordering stuff, so I'm happy. I'm happy. Yes, it could be It could be that. And Dan, right. We watch this at night, and it's for some reason your comments are not catching up to my voice, to what I ask. It's just really weird. And uh, But my wife watches it, but she says it's very irritating. So... Maybe she's just talking about me. <laughs> I finally get it. It's me that she's talking about. This show is very irritating. All right, go. Okay, we got everybody's answer, and Joe said something. Yeah, Ricky J. Ricky J was the right answer. Best sleight of hand artist ever. He also was the only uh, magician to have a profile on PBS's American Masters. He was the only magician ever to be in this series. So, yes, he did really good. There you go, R Ricky J. Well, today, 1970, he was born American actor, born in Chicago. He played Jerry Lewis in a TV movie called Martin and Lewis. He also stars in Will and Grace. Who is this guy? Somebody should know. Very funny, very funny actor, and uh, very funny, and he's a good actor, too. Very, very funny. All right, let's see who gets this one right. All right. So we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have two books for prizes, and uh, we're gonna give out two gift codes that day, maybe three, maybe three gift codes. I'll I'll, I'll make it five prizes uh, tomorrow. So you know, if you win one, you can't win another, but it's gonna be drawn out of a hat. So there you go. Yes. So who in the world is this guy that we're talking about? And I'm glad that you came in today. It's really not a hot day today, but. It's nice. It's nice out. It really is. Yeah. But I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt today. I didn't want to show off my muscles. <laughs> All right. But they are on my side. Good. Uh, we only got one answer for this? Nobody else's answer? I know there's 14 people in the room. Virginia left. Darcy left. That's, that's the end of the ladies. All right. What are we going to do? All right, okay, we, now we're talk, cooking. All right. Tom Gentile says it three times, but I'm going <laughs> to... That darn autocorrect. And there you go. i got to tell Debbie it's slow for me, too, in this room. All right. <laughs> hey, Dean. All right. Hey, Dean. Hey, Jerry. Throw the baby down the stairs. A piece of candy. That's right, Jerry. You are correct. You played Larry. You played Larry. No idea. That's close enough. 
Darcy, I'll give you a point because you have no idea. That's good. All right. If you said Sean Hayes, Will and Grace, you got to get a television set, Darcy. No doubt about it. Uh, Will and Grace, that's right. He was in Will and Grace. Of course, he played Jack McFarlane. And on this, hey, lady. <laughs> I know you're there, Darcy. You're just snooping. You're just window shopping. On this day in 1925, the movie The Gold Rush was released. Who wrote, directed, and starred in this movie? The Gold Rush from 1925. And that'll end our history segment. You learn a lot in this show. <laughs> I learned, don't go back too far in history. Exactly. I mean, well, we won't have to worry about that in a few years. <laughs> History's going to start at this point, 2020, and go from there. I think that's the way it's going to work, okay? But, yeah, I'm looking forward to next year. But, yes, yeah, stay home. Mask it up. All right. All right. Gary's taking Michael Merce's place in doing codes. All right, but that's fine. All right. Some codes I don't get completely, but some do, I do. And, and Bill. All right. So it's going to be a good show. I got a couple books on this shelf I'm going to give away. Some codes, magic codes. Be names drawn out of a hat. Be good. John Ford. What? <laughs> All right. We, we're doing good now. We're doing God, good, guys. Yesterday, I think you guys, I think Ed had 13, and then uh, Karen had 13, and then uh, I had to make a decision, and I go, uh, but Karen won. She, she did, did a good job, and she's not here today because she's, after you win your $5 code, you don't hang around. <laughs> we got everybody? I think so. It was Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. I have a bad code. There you go. Thank you. Debbie and I are coming up with a an, uh, uh, an unbelievable <laughs> segment for tomorrow. So make sure it's it's crazy. We thought about it. We go, what if we did this? And we, we came up with a couple of points for that. All right, so you sort of, sort of, sort of done it. It's history. It's history the way we like it finished. <laughs> Put on my disco boots. Put on my laser suit. My laser suit. Everybody sing along. I like this one. Is Debbie going to be here tomorrow? Well, she will be in the other room. She doesn't come in. No. No, I told her, you know, we're, we're supposed to be social distancing. <laughs> we tried to do that. She plays with the kitty we, we don't have. Yeah, all right. Got a voicemail. I don't know what that came from. Got a voicemail. I'm going to have to listen to that later. All right, I don't know what that happened. Voicemail. All right, good. Uh, music trivia. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. We're going to do something different with music trivia, all right? So a lot of songs were about the days of the week, you know, like eight days a week by the Beatles. You know, that's not the answer, all right? But a lot of songs were recorded about the days of the week. Uh, with the the day in the title. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to do music trivia. I don't have anything for that, but that's okay. All right, so here are a few questions about them. Sam Cooke and Cat Stevens sang a song about an evening of one day of the week where it was lonely and he had no date. So what song did Sam Cooke, separately, along with the Cat Stevens, separately, sing a song about a day of the week that was really lonely and they had no date? All right, so what song was that, the day of the week? Well, you got seven days to figure it out. I'm not going to go anywhere. Uh, Debbie should make an appearance tomorrow. I'll, I'll ask her. Maybe she'll just wave. I don't know. All right. Yeah. All right, yeah. Okay. We'll see what happens. Well, good luck in Montana, Nick. i never been there. i never been to Montana. All right. All right. And Trent, ladies and gentlemen. All right, good. Trent's a busy guy. I'm glad he's got some work there for the company. All right? All right. Well, try to give me the whole title for the song. It helps me. And Joe. Joe got something. Good. All right, we got it? April Fool's Day. <laughs> All right, Rich. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going to wear my tuxedo tomorrow. I don't know. It'll be 120 or so. I don't know. 
I don't know what I'm going to wear. Probably me. <laughs> Probably my birthday suit. What? No, hello. It's my birthday. No. All right. And Terry's got something. All right. Wait. There we go. We got it. We got it. We got it. We... Well, just a Saturday night, and I ain't got nobody. That was Cat Stevens and Sam Cooke. They sang it separately, of course, in different years, but it was a nice song. Another Saturday night. Nobody had that. They had it. People had it. I saw it. All right. All right. Don Costa's orchestra. They didn't have any singing in this song. And the Cordettes sang a song about getting kissed all the time, but they needed a day of rest. They mention every day of the week in this song that kissing is all right to do, but they draw the line on one day. What was the title of that song? The Cordettes and the Don Costa Orchestra. And it was also, I think it was also a movie. I'm not sure, but we'll see. We want Debbie. We want Debbie. Well, if you spell her name like that, Dan, she's not coming out. <laughs> it's an I at the end of that. Get rid of that Y. She sees that. That's the end of our friendship. <laughs> no, not yours. Debbie and mine. <laughs> All right. All right. What do we got here? Anything? All right. See, now this is, this is a fun segment. All right. I like it. Because there's a lot of days of the week out there. Well, there's only seven, but I don't know what the eighth day of the week would be called, though. Do you? No, I don't either. But it would be nice if they had eight days a week in it. And, uh, oh, Nick. Nick said something. Oh, boy. And uh, Bill. And Bill said, the Bill, did Bill say it twice? Yeah, he said it twice. I got it. I got it. I would love to see Debbie. Well, I'm not taking the camera in. We're not going to go in and see Debbie. Debbie doesn't want to be on camera. I'll bring a baby picture in tomorrow and show Debbie, and they'll be that. Uh, oh, Gary Levinson, sorry. Uh, oh, Joe, 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 Joe said, "Oh, you know what? Dude. All right, I'll, I'll give you that because it said you said the thing. What'd you mess up, Dan? Oh, that's that's all. It's okay. It's not your fault. Now you take a nap. <laughs> all right. Never on a Sunday. Dan's a, Dan's the best sport. He's a good sport. He really is. We'll find out tomorrow how good he is. Sport he is." No, we're just going to play his, his commercial again. Uh, Sunday will be never, never on a Sunday. That's right. You can kiss me on a Monday, a Tuesday. It was never on Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. All right, there you go. Never on a Sunday. And finally, Spanky and our gang sang a song about a day of the week, talking about losing her boyfriend and walking around in the park. And Gary, I uh, already got it. <laughs> All right, Zzz, there goes Dan into Napville. All right, unbelievable. All right, Gary got two songs with one answer. I don't know how he did it. All right, what song did Spangy and our gang sing? A song about the day of the week. Losing her boyfriend, walking around. I, I did, Gary, I looked above. Can you see through this? <laughs> Gary's reading the questions from the back. That's unbelievable. And Trent, I'm playing this song because Michael Murth's not here, so he's not, not his favorite one. But I like it. It's called, uh, it's on YouTube music. It's called Zillionaire. And Trent says it, Darcy, Monday. <laughs> no, my show's Saturday. Huh? So, okay, I got it. Bill. All right. <laughs> And Joe, I never heard this song all the way through. All right. And Sunday. Sunday. Wow, that's it? There you go. It's Sunday. will never be the same. Sunday will never be the same with Spanky in our day. Come Monday. That's a different one. But there you go. So that's our, that's our second segment with uh, music trivia as we go on on our little uh, show here. A little rinky dink show. Whoa! Do you remember 1970 in Walla Walla, Washington, <laughs> doing George Carlin, <laughs> hippy dippy weatherman? There you go, one hit wonders from 1970. The lead singer of Paul Revere, 
uh, sang his only top 20 song, Mark Lindsay, that's right, Mark Lindsay, by himself, and he reached number four. The title of the song was The Name of a State. What was his hit song from Mark Lindsay this week in uh, the top 20 of uh, 1970? Somebody's got to know these questions. I can't be the only one who knows all this stuff. <laughs> well, it could be. Could be. You never know. All right. I, I don't like when I get voice messages from a number I don't know. But that's okay. <laughs> it's like, who was that? It's always 866 number. Is she calling me again? I told her never to call me collect. And Trent. Oh, Tom. You know, I try to make these questions hard, but it seems like they're so easy when I read them. Well, I don't want to make them too hard, because then i got to be sitting here waiting for you to answer questions. All right. We got it? There we go. This is terrific. Wow. We got some people in the, we got some people in the runnings up here. It's good. What? San Francisco. Oh, wait a minute. We got one more song? One more. Oh, one more on Hit Wonders. I love this next one. And we got everybody? I think so. I think so. I guess so. It was uh, Mark Lindsay singing uh, Arizona. That's right. That, come on. That was a good one. There you go. Arizona. Mark Lindsay. From Mark Lindsay. Paul Revere and the Raiders. That's right. So here's the next song. And the number 12 song of 1970 was a hit song in May by a group called The Ides of March. A song that rocked the charts. I got pictures, got candy, I'm a lovable man, and I can take you to the nearest star. Why don't I just give you this song, for goodness sake? What, what song was that? I even had to read the lyrics? Come on. The Ides of March, their only big hit, one hit wonder. That's crazy. Uh-oh. There you go. Get rid of those pieces of paper. All right. Tomorrow, 100 shows. It's already 2.30 out here. This is unbelievable. What do we got? Anything? All right. You people are really great. You guys are unbelievable. Unbe All right. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> what, am I, what am I looking at? Look at am I looking at. I'm looking at who's won and who wasn't. All right. All right, there you go. And Tom? And, uh, wow, all right, good. I have to look and see who's got what where and who's won last. And, oh, it's a long time ago. All right, good. You know, I have to be fair to everybody. Everybody gets a code anyway, eventually, you know. Yeah, I know. It was awful. All right. Did we get it? And really... All right, Department of Motor Vehicles. Speaking of that, I gotta go there eventually. I still, I don't really own this whole car yet. Still waiting for the title to come in. All right, what do we got? Da 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 da. I'm your vehicle, baby. Uh, I'll take you everywhere you go. There you go. All right, I'm your vehicle. All right, music trivia. There you go. Oh, believable. What are we doing next? I don't know. All right. Ooh, this is a good one. All right. This, is this mind-blowing trivia? All right, we'll do this then. I didn't know it was coming up. All right, let's see if somebody gets this. Thank you, Debbie. There's Debbie right there. Go on up here. It's her little emoji. Emoji. That's what she really looks like in real life, as a matter of fact. Just took a picture of her. All right. Here we go. This is a mind-blowing trivia. See if you get this. There's two states that never recorded a temperature of higher than 100 degrees. Two states. I'll give you the first one. You have to tell me the second. Alaska. Alaska never recorded a temperature of higher than 100 degrees. There you go. So now, 
You have to tell me, believe it or not, what is the second state that's never recorded a higher temperature than 100? Mind-blowing trivia. You're not going to believe the answer unless you already know it. All right? Let's see. Great Caesar's Ghost. <laughs> I love you. Great Caesar's Ghost, I love you. i uh, never recorded a higher temperature than 100, which coincidentally is the same temperature you can't go into a casino with. It's 101. They put you in a corner. All right, let's see what we got here. All right. All right. Wait, wait a minute. All right. Kathy's here, ladies and gentlemen. Kathy showed up halfway through the show. There you go. Hi, Kathy. Hello, Kathy. <laughs> Kathy Dermott, ladies and gentlemen. My neighbor, my compadre, what, many years back there when I was a little kid and riding a bicycle. You know, we're down a hill on Pine Street. There you go. Montana, Michigan. Wow. I can't believe it. Has everybody got an answer in? I think so. Wow. 50 states. That's what we got. Reconnection. I'm waiting for live video. I know. I'm waiting. There I am. I'm back again. I'm back in the saddle again. I don't like it when they disconnect me. This uh, OBS system. It's BS. <laughs> Take the O out of it. You got something there. Okay. BS. Hi, Kathy. It got disconnected. If, uh, if you looked at the answer, Ed Gardner got the answer. It was Hawaii. Hawaii was the right answer. Because of, even though it's out there... The ocean is cooler out there where Hawaii is. Never reached 100 degrees or more in Hawaii. So, mm, yes, there you go. And there you go. What have we got now? Next question. All right. Is this mind-blowing? I don't know. What actress was the first one to produce a TV show, a TV sitcom show, and it wasn't Lucy? What actress was the first one to produce a TV sitcom show, and it wasn't Lucy? So, let's see who gets this one. All right. All right. I don't like it when the OBS disconnects. I better not do that tomorrow. We're going to be live, by the way. So be here, all right? All right. What actress was the first one to produce a TV sitcom show, and it wasn't Lucy, Lucy and uh, she's still around today. Yeah, all right. Seeing what we got here. All right, what do we got? Mary Tyler Moore, Mary T Carol Burnett. We got a Betty White in there, and we got Kathy Dermott. No, she... Wait. <laughs> Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett. What? First one to produce a sitcom show. All right. All right. We got it? All right, I think, we, I think everybody's got an answer. All right, did we get it? That's something. Somebody got the answer right. It was Betty White. Betty White was the first female to produce a TV sitcom show and uh, before even uh, Lucy did it. So there you go. All right, we're uh, kind of done with uh, mind-blowing trivia, but we're going to continue on with our little trivia escapade here. Uh, what was? What is the name? Uh, ready? Yeah. Here we go. What What was the name? Everybody's doing okay today. Yes. We're just waiting for tomorrow because the 100 show is coming up. Uh, what is the name of the building on the back of a nickel? <laughs> and everybody just went into their pockets. <laughs> what is the name of the building on the back of a nickel? All right? Remember nickels? I don't know if they still got them. Pennies? Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know that either. All right? <laughs> the back of a nickel. I remember being up on uh, in Johnstown. I produced a radio show, but it was only in my own house. It was, <laughs> I don't know else did that. I, you know, set in my closet, had my record players going, everything. All right, what do we got here? Really? That's what it is, huh? Uh, Piggly Wiggly. All right. Jefferson Memorial. Joe says something crazy. And Tom Gentile says something, and so does Gary. We all say something. And Nick, ladies and gentlemen. Nick from Philly, the old Philadelphia, all right, and Jefferson Memorial, and uh, what do we got? Do we have it? I'm just waiting to, 
and, and Kathy. All right, guys. Got to give Kathy three points for just coming in. She'll never catch up. <laughs> if I don't give her some points, she'll never she'll never come back again. So she's got three points. It's Monticello. Monticello, Monticello. Oh, I love you. There you go. All right. How many pecks in a bushel basket? <laughs> go right into it. I'm just... Because you know why? Tomorrow's very few questions. And they are. They're going to be silly ones. So, but I'm going to give points anyway. All right. How many pecks in a bushel basket? Let's see if any... I don't know how much a peck is, but... <laughs> no, I, I got to leave the room in a minute. But let me have some water. It's embarrassing, isn't it? How many pecks in a bushel basket? All right. I never, I never even knew what a peck was until I looked this question up. But I love you, a bushel and a peck. Remember that? Tom Gentile. What's he got? Oh. Fifteen? <laughs> it's a good start, Darcy. Six, five, five. Uh, and a bushel and a peck and a hug around neck. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. That's not an answer, is it? No. Let me count your... How many... One, two... Nope, you didn't have enough of them there. <laughs> I had to call... Hey, uh, there you go. Hug around the neck. And a hug... Thank you, Dan. Everybody's singing songs to me. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Are we counting Gregory? Gregory, yes, Gregory Peck. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give you that. Thank you. Terry Morgan, are we counting Gregory? I'm not thinking straight. I'm going to. And Sam Peck and Paul, we got him. He's in there. We got everybody. And and there's a. Uh, all right, there we go. And there's some crickets, all right. <laughs> four. There's four Pecks in a bushel. Did you know that? I had no idea that, but there you go. I love you. A bushel and a peck. A peck and a bushel. All right, what do we got next? How many years did we only have 48 states? How many years did we only have 48 states? And uh, I'm not going to tell you what years they were because then you could add it up and figure it out yourself. What a genius, huh? <laughs> Can't believe I've done so many shows and survived with coming up with questions. And I try not to repeat anyone. If you go back and listen to every other show that I've done, I don't think I repeated more than three. I could be wrong, but you could look look up for yourself. <laughs> All right. How many years did we only have 48 states? Because before this date, we had 47, and then 46. And so 48 states, how many? States, and there's a there's years that they right because one remember was a republic remember they had a republic never mind you'll figure it 170 how many years did we only have 48 states I should have said it the other way how many did we had 13 states but what we got anything not really <laughs> did anybody get it no not really. Do we even have the? Yeah, we have it. No. Oh, wait a minute. No, no. 170, 12, 14. Boy, this should have been a mind-blowing question. 47. 47 years. From 1912 to 1959, we only had uh, 47 years, 48 states. That's pretty amazing. 47 years, 48 states. And uh, here we go. One more question. Why not? What does uh, SKU stand for? Skew, what does SKU stand for? There you go. Is that my show? I still got time left. What am I going to do now? <laughs> oh, I still got questions. I got leftovers. All right. What do we got? Anything? All right, let's do something here. Let's play some music for me. All right. 76, no, 48 states. <laughs> 19, no, I already looked it up. Don't, okay, what do we got? Okay, now somebody's got something. I don't know. Oh, Joe. Joe's got an answer. Gary Levinson? I don't know. 
We only had 48 states from 1912 to 1959. Then we went up to 50. But before that, I don't know. All right. All right. It's a beautiful day. Thank you for coming in. And I want to thank each and every one of you uh, to, for coming in all its time, really. I mean, that's a lot of time. I didn't think when I started this that this would be going in so long. I thought we'd all be outside, you know, breathing fresh air and enjoying our lives. You know, it's uh, it's tough being coked up in this hand, damn it. All right. And Ed, Ed's got an answer. And Tom Gentile's got something here. And uh, Dan has S. <laughs> All right. You see Dan the answer? All right, good. And there you go. It's a stock keeping unit. Stock keeping unit. There you go. That was kind of fun, wasn't it? We had some good times together in that last few minutes. <laughs> All right, Uncle Fester. All right. What do we got now? Oh, you know what? Let's do this. Mm hmm. Baby, baby. Hey, and it's time again for commercials. Oh, it's commercial trivia. And I'm going to play this commercial, and you are going to tell me Who's in the commercial? And so halfway <laughs> during the commercial, you got to tell me who the guy is. I know who the woman is, but you tell me who the guy is, and uh, here we go. You'll be amazed when you try new Healthy Favorites cheese. Is that a diet cheese? Rather eat the wrapper. Craig, Healthy Favorites is different. It's from Kraft. Sure, it has half the fat of regular cheese and fewer calories, but Kraft makes it taste so rich, so creamy, so delicious. Excuse me. Mm. This is good. Did you make one for yourself? Men are so predictable. New healthy favorites from Kraft. It'll be your favorite. Thank you. Am I going to get an Emmy? I'm uh, an Emmy. I uh, what do they call it for an Emmy on, on Facebook? <laughs> I'll be lucky if I get a Hammy. <laughs> All right. Did you get something? All right. Yeah, come on. Yeah, Shelley Fabre. If you want to. Well, get a point. I'll give you a point for both. I don't care. All right. Craig something. All right. <laughs> well, he, he gave it away, Rich, but that, that's good. All right. And that's that's good. And Bill said something. All right. All right. See, that wasn't that good? That was fantastic. That was that was Shelly Fabre. Kathy, I'll give you uh, give you that, okay, because that it was her. That's Fab Show. Remember her? She sang. She was in the Don Reed Show. And Gary, crazy Gary, and Tom, man, this is great. You guys are unbelievable. You are trivia maniacs to the fourth power, as I say. Okay, what else? Oh, Terry, I was sleeping there for a second. All right, and Joe, look at this. And my pencil's still still in good shape, so it's good. And coach, there you go. I'll give you two points for that, Kathy. Tonight are daytime Emmys. That's right. Bob Barker's gonna win. <laughs> I don't watch daytime TV. I don't know. Was it Drew Carey? Could he win? That's right. Remember that? Remember the remember the late night shows with the family feuds and all the you know the the old hosts. Yeah, Ray Combs. Ray Combs. Uh, he was one of the hosts. He lived down the road here in Glendale. Sad, sad story about Ray Holmes. Anyway, so if you said it, and uh, what was the answer? Stock keeping unit. <laughs> no, it was Craig T. Nelson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there, there you go. I'd rather eat the package. That's right. And you ever notice on ice cream, like Briar's ice cream? It doesn't say ice cream on it. Nowhere on that container does it say Briar's ice cream on it. It doesn't say that at all. But, hey, as long as we did something... We might as well do this. Yay! Hello! Alright. Ooh, it's time now for TV trivia. That's why we haven't done this one in a long time. Susan Lucci's gonna win and knock me right out of the box there. Alright. I don't know if you'll even know this question, but we'll see. Alright. Alright, let's make an easy one. Name Quick Draw McGraw's sidekick. Name Quick Draw McGraw's 
sidekick. I think he's Howard Stern's sidekick, sidekick too. All right, I don't know. Let's hear, let's hear it for Bill Cullen. I hope he wins. And any any chance that the, the guiding light will win. <laughs> Another world with that Blebian? All right, Terry. All right. All right. We got some good ones. Mike Pence. He's a side, sidekick, isn't he? Oh, my gosh. And Bill. I see... See, somebody got in trouble today for using uh, military funds. <laughs> when he wasn't supposed to. Whoop, I thought it was, I thought it was, I couldn't use that money. All right, all right. Dan and Tom. I realize that autocorrect is now having a heart attack. <laughs> Louis Anderson and... Uh, Short supplies. Ice creams are in... Briars not really says ice cream on it. Phil McGraw and Banana Louie. Uh, <laughs> Baba Louie, Baba Louie, or uh, whatever you got it. Ladies and gentlemen, it was Baba Louie, Baba Louie, Baba Louie. Exactly. I don't know. Let me, if, let me see if I even know this answer. I do, I guess. I'll ask it. What role did Sam Jaffe play on Ben Casey? Oh, my gosh. Who was in that? Vince Edwards? Was he Ben Casey? I don't know. I, don't, I watched it. Uh-oh. I, I sit here and watch the news come up, and it's not good. All right, so when I say uh-oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. People are amazing. All right. Terry, you want to uh, go one, two, three, four... Oh, you, you won five days ago. Just checking. And Joe. Joe's won in the past. He's done really well. And Nick. And uh, Nick's going to Montana. That's a wide open space. You'll be able to stay outside and not even wear a mask out there. Exactly. And Bill. Oh, my gosh. And Gary Levinson. Gee, you people are... You know your stuff. Proctologist. Dan... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan. Enough of this. Enough of this foolishness. <laughs> That's right. You know, I don't mind going to my proctologist, but when he turns the lights down low and puts the candles down and some, some Dean Martin music in the background, I don't like that at all. <laughs> exactly. We're, now we're both wearing masks and gloves when I go there. All right. And, and the old man, Ed Gardner, says, uh, Dr. Zorba. It's Greek to me, but you got that answer right, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Zorba, the old man. I don't think he's still alive. Uh, oh, the wedding. It was through, oh, 50 people. But make sure there's social distancing and they stay outside. Do the wedding outside. I'm just telling you. What I've been reading today, it's all inside. Everything's inside. Don't go out. Don't stay outside. Name the butler on Batman. Name the butler on Batman. Jeez, Bob, could these questions? I don't even know if he had a last name, but just name his first name, because that's all I need. I don't care about anything else in life right now. All right, all right. Let's do this song. There we go. Sing, swing, bada bing. Here we go. Come on, everybody, dance. Let's go. All right, that's enough. Uh, uh. <laughs> All right, what do we got? All right. Somebody's getting wise with me here. All right. And Nick. Boy, Nick, that's pretty cool. And Ed. Jeez. You guys are reading the same books I am, I think. <laughs> This could be, I don't know. Maybe Debbie's feeding you all the answers. Maybe she's calling you people. I'll fix this guy's wagon. <laughs> and Dan. Dan's got four points. I don't know. Tell, tell Patty to help you out more. Show tomorrow is going to be unbelievable. I got some great talent coming on. And uh, also some people in the room. <laughs> That's a joke. Everybody's got talent. Everybody's talented. All right, Joe and Gary says something. 
Yeah, not today. You don't hear the butlers say that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Alfred E. Newman. There you go. Alfred's close enough, Kathy. I'll give it to you. There you go. All right, and it was Alfred. Alfred. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, indeed. All right. All right, what's the next question? Do we have another? Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I can say. All right. I did this question last time. Ah, see, I almost got. Oh, okay. We can't go on to this. Okay. Let me see if there's anything on this side. Talk amongst yourself a second. No, I already used all those questions. Can't do that. All right. Well, you know, that was TV trivia. That's close enough. We did a lot of stuff today. And uh, that was TV trivia time. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Bob is going to sing a song. Guess the name, it won't take long. Bob is going to sing a sing a why it's a trivia show. All right. Bob is going to sing a song. Well, it's out of shock, eh? When skies are cloudy and gray, they're only gray for day. So wrap your troubles in dreams and dream all your troubles away. Hmm. Just remember the sunshine will always follow the rain. All right, that's enough. That's enough of that guy. All right, so what song is that guy singing? He actually sang a song or tried to. There you go. What song is that? It's one of my favorite songs, as a matter of fact. It's what I wish everybody would do. All right, what song did that guy sing? What a, what a thing that is. 251, yipey. All right. All right, yes, okay, what are, you, what are we doing? We're, we're just having conversations? <laughs> That's okay, I don't care. We've got to do something here. All right, the sun will come out tomorrow. All right. All right, what are we doing? Are we still on the air? <laughs> so far, so good. All right, we're, we're good. Wow, really? Nobody's got it. Even now I sang it. <laughs> the sun will come out tomorrow. It comes out every day here in Burbank. All right. All right, nobody's got it. Let me just sit here for a minute. Dun, dun. <laughs> no idea. Really? I Really? I even sang the title in the song. Really? Oh, that's terrible. Put your troubles in your old kit bag. All right, fine. People. <laughs> Raindrops keep... Fine, fine, people. I get you. All right, that's okay. It's fine. All right, so Rich has got, it was wrap your troubles and dreams. When skies are cloudy and gray, only gray, wrap your troubles and dreams. It was an old song, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my gosh. Hi, gang. Uh, <laughs> Big Fig here with that great new dance, the new. <laughs> Hit it, Hal. Gooey, gooey, rich and chewy inside. Golden, flaky, tender, cakey outside. Wrap the inside in the outside. Is it good? Darn tootin' so in the big All right, there was Matt King singing <laughs> the Big Fig Newton commercial. There you go. It was Steve Daly. Don't, don't, don't talk about people like this. It's, it's not right. Nobody. Maybe they're lurking, and maybe they're watching us, and maybe they're just writing down trivia questions for their own show. All right, I'm going to play a face at somebody in this room, and since there are 11 people in here, maybe somebody will guess. It's a picture far away, but look at that car. Look at that car. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is. And somebody's on a blanket on the hood of the car. It was probably about 106, and they go, well, let's put the baby on top of a hot car. <laughs> Blueberry Newton's in the fridge, in the freezer. We'll be right over. Another uh, another guess. Anybody guess who this is? 
All right. It should be simple enough. There's 11 people here. Somebody's got to guess who this little baby is. It's cute. It's cute. Look at this. All right. Let's see what we got here. All right. Let me see. We got any music to play or something? A sneaky business? or? All right. Let's see what we got. Wow. Tom says, wow. This is crazy, isn't it? Wow. Rich says, Bill, my wife, Patty, and Joe says that. Wow. Did, he guess, did Nick guess something? I don't know. I got to see. Let me look. I'm, I'm trying to keep track of everybody. Robert Blake. Somebody in the room, Nick. Somebody in the room, for goodness sakes. Why does he always guess Robert Blake? I, <laughs> you related to him or something? All right. All right. Nice Plymouth, thank you. That's not that's the car, and uh, who was that? Is it somebody we know? Yes, I think it was. My wife Lillian Gish, ladies and gentlemen. No, it was <laughs> Kathy. Kathy, that was right. Kathy is absolutely right. Amazing, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's been great having you all here today. It really is. Oh, who are the people in your Walmart store? You're not going to believe your eyes. You know, another trip down memory lane heck? as we go to Walmart. Uh, all right, there we go. Oh, look at it. <laughs> There's some bling for you. Okay, yeah, well, I need a Coke spoon. <laughs> Is that big enough for you? Wow, talk about spooning. He must, I bet he goes to the ice cream aisle and uses that spoon. But what else has we got? Oh, okay, so that's where all the toilet paper went, in this crappy Voyager. <laughs> all right, and finally in Walmart, look at all that toilet paper. Wow. And finally, yep, it's also nice to take your pet for a walk when you're <laughs> inside of Walmart. And don't forget, they'll take anybody. They'll just walk in, pants, no pants, underwear, no underwear. It's Walmart, the superstore. I'll rather have the soup. Thank you. What the heck? All right, what do we got? Whoa. Anything? We have a winner. We do. Yabba -dabba -doo. Exactly. To boldly go where no man has gone before. I don't have to show you any stinking flashes. Join Bob Carroll next time for more trivia on Facebook. A festivus for the rest of us. Go ahead. Make my day. You can't handle the truth. Oh man, what a Step day, out huh? Of it. Sounds like a show to me. Come to the coast. You get the get there you go. All right. Well, hey, it's, it's that time again when it's time for me to pack up my little trivia questions. Thank goodness I don't have to do too much tomorrow. 100 shows tomorrow. I thank each and every one of you for coming in today. And today, because I looked at everybody's list, they've all won in the last week or so. We're going to give it to uh, Nick because Nick hasn't been here for a while. He needs a $5 gift code so he can do magic tricks at his son's wedding. So that's great. Let's give Nick another round of applause. I appreciate it. It's It's been wonderful. Oh, my gosh. Can you believe it? I can't believe it that it's uh, that time again. Yeah, give it to Nick, for goodness sakes. Everybody's won twice, three times, four times. Uh, unbelievable. All right. Well, hey, is it that time? It is. I thought this thing was working, but it's not. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks for the memories. Thanks for being here. Uh, th there we go. It works. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a day. It's been a fantastic day. And a thank you for coming in. Tomorrow, oh, 100 shows under the belt. Can't believe it. Big, big extravaganza tomorrow. I can't wait. I really can't. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Same time, same bat channel for your old pal Bob. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming in. 
Thank you. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you for coming in here. It's been a rough uh, few months, and uh, we've made it through this far. And I can't believe you guys know this much about trivia. Until next time, America, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Love everybody. See you later. Bye. This show is pre-recorded so other people can suffer through it. Thank you for coming in, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, until... <laughs> Anybody in there? <laughs> uh, hope to see you tomorrow, too, everybody. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. It's been a beautiful day. Uh, <laughs> love to everybody. Safe travels. Wear the mask. Mask it up, my friends. Mask it up. CN.